You want to go first? <laughs> I think w. w is after. <laughs> F. Fair enough. Uh, so the funny thing is, I actually, um, well, when I met the Cash Music guys, I actually don't remember at all the conversation. The only thing I remember is uh, Jesse walking in and telling me his last name, Von Doom, and I was like, dude, you're like fucking kidding me. That's not a name. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first, literally the first question was like, you know, like, that's not your real name, is it? Um, anyway, um, yeah, so uh, super happy to be here. Um, uh, I'm uh, kind of like a tech startup guy, for better or worse. Um, I did three startups. I was at eBay uh, Germany in the very early days. Um, I did venture capital, which is kind of like the evil side of startup world, uh, and uh, spent five years at Mozilla. Uh, which is the maker of the Firefox web browser, 500 million users worldwide, um, open source, nonprofit, um, and did a bunch of stuff there, uh, mostly around building this movement and building the community there. Um, and the last uh, year I spent as um, kind of like a chief of staff there, working on all aspects of the business, and that became kind of tiring. Um, so a week ago I joined uh, Google, uh, which is a very different place. Um, and my, my job there is, is quite fascinating. It's like I'm a do-gooder. Uh, I work for Google Giving, um, literally changing the world uh, through technology, investing in, in nonprofits all around the world, doing really interesting, cool shit. Um, yeah, and kind of that's me. I've got a bit of a tech background, never been an engineer really, um, kind of know what questions to ask. Uh, and my only music street cred is that I was part of the German Gabba scene, which is the techno electronic music equivalent of the punk rock scene. Um, you know, like illegal clubs and um, uh, I was a VJ, so uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. That's good. I your plan, I remember they were electronic band, uh, and uh, DAF. Oh yeah. Yeah, DAF. I'm uh D Boone's bass player. <laughs> I got a degree in electronics early 80s. In high school, they had me in an electric shop to fix TVs. We need slide rules to go from polar to rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, I've been torn for 33 years. Here on some recordings. And. Uh, Moved to Pedro when I was 40. Uh, no, been in Pedro 45 years. From Virginia when I was 10. And yeah, I'm still figuring out what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> right now, pretty much bass player. But there's a lot to learn with the bass. So. I don't even have to go to those five string kind to keep <laughs> finding out what I'm, I'm to be. But I like the idea of what Maggie's saying with the community because that's what, if you want to know about the old punk days, that's really what it was about. And people, I mean, we're all born with this uh, different thumbprint. But then there's so much common ground in between. I know part of art is trying to express this fingerprint thing. But along with it, which might not be as articulate as an individual statement, it is the sense of different people. And me being a base, now I didn't pick it. Dee Boone's mom put me on it, but I'm glad. It's politically, you know, you look good making the other cats look good. You're a. Uh, well, most people go into the head and they look at the tile. Well, the base is like the grout, you know, we stick. And if you don't have things to stick to, you end up a puddle. So, I'm interested in this discussion that was going on when I got here. I was just doing a radio show. First time I was on the side of the radio show where you do, you know, you're not the guest, was here in Silver Lake. It was called KDLT. It was a pirate radio show. 
And then I went over to the internet. I've had it now for 12 and a half years. I'll definitely say the internet helped. <laughs> Didn't have to uh, get the adversary of the government. I, I could even hear it in Pedro because when we got to the four level, you couldn't hear it anymore. Uh, I think some ethics I like. Uh, we can be done with the internet. Really go back to like fancy culture and those old punk days when everyone hated it. So you had to find a few polluted people who were into it. Uh, they they'd be running the fancy in their town. They their band would open up. And they'd find the Italian American Club or uh, you know Masonic Hall. Ukrainian, put on the thing, he conquered his path. There's a lot of bad people. And I still think those things can happen. Now, I was hearing this thing about the comments. And that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know? Some ways I think, I mean, D. Boone starting a punk band it was during, uh, Mr. Regan was a uh, he won that beauty contest. <laughs> and we were kind of in the comments section there. <laughs> we might have made, in fact, the young man at UCLA made a video for $440. And he had him in there shooting the wrong point. Well, I think that was actually the war film he was in. But I don't think we were totally uh, with his program. So I think we had a setting view. So I think that's part of the risk. I think, uh, well, what do you think about that? I think part of the response, nobody has responsibility. They can just say names. Yeah, I think there's a, um, there's actually something which, which I would like to, to kind of bring up earlier, which is um, you mentioned the, the notion of like people, community, and the, the, yeah. the fingerprint and the thumbprint and the people like running fan signs. And um, I'm curious to see, there's this debate about like, the internet like creates this culture of like consumption, right? Like the kids today are consuming, and at the same time, what I see, I see this beauty in like people creating and people getting together and creating, right? Yeah. So open source is like one way, like where in a very specific niche, which is development and you know writing code, people come together and co-create and yeah. openly share. How do you feel this like, you know, not having been part of that culture, you know, back in the day, like? Was there a similar kernel to that culture? Like the punk rock, was it, were you united in your belief or were you actually also united in, the, in a creative process? Well, it was like parallel universe. It was like the square job thing, we can't really fit. And why keep competing? Why keep push down? Why not develop around it? Not so much like trying to overthrow them or right. something or win them over, you know, even the word punk, I mean, it was very strange. In my town, there was a guy who got fucked in jail for cigarettes. Why would you call your music this, you know? And then when I saw the shows, I, I understood in a way. They, they'll call it whatever, just to m make sure they can call it. It's them calling it. It's not coming from upstairs, right? And because that, actually, that 70s punk that I come from is, Reaction to arena rock, which uh, you know, some people felt were kind of like a, a Nuremberg rallies, you know, it right, was right, right. different. Th no, I, I found out being with the Stooges, there was a club culture in the '60s. You know, people actually talking to each other, not just sitting in the dark, a thousand feet away, and the light show. And they actually, yeah, the guy next to you was the next guy on stage, and was like just taking turns playing for each. Other. So there was a dynamic, which is kind of like a world. Instead of, like you were saying, kids, consumers. I think right. there was kids were consumers in the old days, too, but the channels were more narrow. Yeah. yeah. Now they're coming out from all sides, but they've right. always been trying. And before that, they used to put them to work in whatever, sh uh, shale from coal piles. Yeah. You know, you go to Ellis Island, they show you pictures of kids. Because the big dream was we're going to come here, right? No, you were going to put your kids in factories, and then you're the last one off the boat, so you're going to get beat down. And... I think the punk thing, where I'm coming from, remember we're boys in the 60s. And so we're seeing these people take to the streets about civil rights, about 
the war. And we get to teen young, I'm 1970, I'm 13. And that was all kind of over. You know, it was big happy rock giant festival and uh, <laughs> and a Charlie Manson had long, don't trust anybody with long hair anymore. Right, right. And, uh, big thing I think was so-called whatever, hippie counterculture, they lost their humor. And it was a glorification of certain kinds of things. And so some people got very pretty to look at each other. That's called disco. And some got kind of ugly. That's <laughs> punk people. <laughs> it just sounds like today. And, and then, you know, it actually only lasted a little bit. And then it went, in the early 80s, it went to the suburbs. Right. And it became kind of a reflection of that hippie thing in the 60s, where the young people are very angry with their parents. And so I'm seeing guys with suntan, strong, you know, Jack Grissom, you know, strong guys with suntans at the punk gigs because they're upset with their parents. Do you feel that there's a, with the shortening of the attention span, so there's this notion of like our attention span shortens tremendously, right? Like, yeah. um, you know, you've got people sitting on stage, they have their phone underneath it. Yes. <laughs> I've seen them conked on a train in Japan. Right. Yeah, right. Um, I, I, so I find this really fascinating. It's like, you know, you've got trends come and go so fast these yeah. days. Um, and, and punk seemed to be, you know, back in the day, it's just such, actually most of the trends actually, like the, the stronger emotionally bonding trends, they, you know, they seem to be much longer lasting and like much more, like bringing people together for a long time and really influencing their lives going forward. You know, like I, I meet people today who tell me like I was punk and like you can see it. You can see it still in the, the way they dress, the way they speak, etc. Do you think this is changing? Do you think like we are losing this kind of like because we are such a fast food, you know, super quick, like well, yeah. where's the next trend? What do we do next? I, uh, someone once told me the only thing new is you finding out about it. <laughs> Ken Bone told me about this thing in the first war in, uh, world war in Switzerland called Dada. Yeah, I couldn't sure. believe how much oh, yeah. similarity on the RC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. And, well, I'm from the harbor, you know, and, and working. You know, I'm curious. You know, we learn yeah. stuff and stuff. But I, I was slow to come in on this stuff. It really wasn't invented with the punks. They had their version of it. And Walt Whitman puts out leaves of grass with his own money. DIY? Right. Like 160 years ago. He be, he gets twelve poems uh, to try to stop the Civil War. I mean, what? Because it was like a fifteen-year, twenty-year slide, and everybody knew it was coming. So I'm going to write these poems and try to stop. It. I'm going to put it out myself. Uh, leader, yeah. Here's a good example, maybe, for me. <laughs> Darby, you know. Uh, Darby's incredible. Uh, the German singer, poet, and all this. He looked up to the guitar man, Pat. Pat was a guy at high school who wore the uh, Cleopatra haircut, platforms, the belly button shirt, comes mm -hmm. books like this, come up to the battle guys and like stuff, and they would be freaked out. And Darby couldn't believe the courage of this guy. You know, just his persona. And it, 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 uh, Kay told me this, you know, she went to high school. It just ennobled him to want to instead just be a fan, listener. Get going. Let's try it man too. It was Pat, this, this uh, nerve he had, and kind of confidence. He really wasn't telling people what to do, he's just being himself, which was not kind of fitting in a little bit. And Darby sees that, let's make a man. So, so, in a way, Pat, like what you're saying, Pat assumed the leadership role, right. but it wasn't, yeah, like giving an order. No, you just, and then you give him permission, right? Yeah, give him permission. Yeah. Yeah, and like with a, like being on SST, you just gave him the tape. In fact, when I went to Mr. Sony, a slightly larger company, the ethics I learned, same thing. If you want me to work for you, let me just submit my tape. You know, like AT and T uh, on the phone. You know, you would hope they wouldn't jump on the line and tell you what to say. Not such an indie company, right? But like. Uh, they were saying before, all those early tours were booked on the phone. Right. Mr. Kowski's phone book. I mean, I'm still torn on that same circuit from 30 years. 
but it was all this stuff. Sometimes you know, working with, you know, like the freeway, you know, the man. It's a that's a military installation, not interstate system. Right. You know, they can drive a tank on. Limo goes by, Volkswagen goes by. Hopefully, somebody jumps in your window and grabs your steering wheel. Right. So what we're talking about. I, I guess I'm always all sensitive to this notion of autonomy. Because that, that was the tradition of the 70s month. Right. It was funny, when the A's punk all sudden uniforms came, you knew how to dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? it's so strange. But they were so young people, I can't blame them. Can't but don't you think that, that, so you just mentioned autonomy. And, yeah, yeah. And because autonomy by you seems guys, almost either anti-leader or we're all leaders. Like Raymond had this great thing. Yeah, right. But these guys beat each other. But the fascinating thing is by you guys basically standing on stage and saying, like, right. it's okay to be... To, to fight for autonomy and to be autonomous, yeah. like you gave people permission to yeah. go there. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, like when it comes to batteries, up to the beer, cups of piss, guys of shit. <laughs> I've been here with a lot of stuff on this. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. Who said keep humble? You know, I'm into that. Yeah. One time, the best was in Vienna, and then all the power went off. First note, it came back on, and I was about 12 used rubbers were all over me. <laughs> so somebody put a lot of labor <laughs> Sweet. into that uh, exchange, a human exchange of spirit. <laughs> no, it's strange. The whole thing of the stage is, is, is trippy. You know, I came from Arena Rock, so I lo really like the idea of the clubs and this idea that they were almost taking turns playing for each other. Right. And also, what I like too is that predictability. Right. Some about that autonomous of uh, expression where it's not so. Man, when you start knowing, you know, paint by number thing, whoa, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. there's something that leaves it. I know it's never going to be the same, right? That's right. the first thing ever. Because a lot of ways that's a reaction. And you free yourself from that old thing you reacted against. But still, you're kept on. Of the process because they didn't have access to the tools, right? That's they, right. Like, grew up in the wrong part of the country, yeah. grew up on the wrong side of the street, like, whatever it was, right? Now we're having this. And then you have this whole, like, what I find so fascinating is like when you look at code again, like when you look at GitHub, which is this like repository for code, they've got a million, they crossed the million members line. So there's a million people who, who learn how like life is about sharing and remixing and, you know, taking from others and building upon this, this creative common, yeah. like this, this, right. this pool of knowledge, which is phenomenal. I mean, it's like, for me, it's like, I cannot wait to see what the next 20 years will bring. Yeah. As long as we're making sure that the kids don't grow up and think that, the, you know, internet is fucking television. Yeah. There's danger there. Yeah. Because the TV has no talk back part. Right. Really scary. Yeah. It's like a telephone that just listens. So we've got to be, yeah, be careful. But they're intense. They're more open-minded. I remember the cats in my uh, teen years. You didn't listen to something five years old. A kid nowadays, he'll listen to 40, 50, Black Sabbath, right? Yeah. So very popular. 40, oh, totally. 50 year old yeah. music. There's no problem. I'm not saying kids are perfect, but they 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 got more open minds than we did. We were the most, most narcissistic. That was so funny when I heard this word slacker in the 90s. And you didn't know slackers unless you knew the 70s. <laughs> you know? Oh my God, man. We were something else. But then you also probably didn't have that easy access, right? Because today they're, they're it's like, today a kid goes on, like they listen to, you know, God knows what kind of singer songwriters currently popular and they're like on, on Spotify and then suddenly Spotify like puts in this weird thing like Sabbath, right? And they're like, hey, that's kind of cool. And then from there they discover other things, right? So all this access wasn't there, right? I, would, I guess, you know, for you, for example, to find data, yeah. It's like this is this obscure, like, yeah, I had to run into thing, Raymond right? Pettibone, this other obscure right. guy. Yeah. That's what was neat about that scene, but there was 200 of us, you know. What, what is it, like 10, 12 billion people? Right. It was so strange. Right. And my, meanwhile, there's Pete Frampton in a kimono, do you feel like I do? And they all echo back, and, you know, I didn't feel like him. <laughs> and I think it's, uh, there's always going to be that at some point, right? There's this the individual and, or, right. or sub. Culture in the culture. I think it's that's part of the human thing. I don't think it's totally uh, weird and foul and not getting with it or being against it. Everybody's got their own way of uh, finding the, finding their way and and the.
connections, coincidences, or planned. Some people, some people are scared of uh, meeting other people because they know that they, they know someone's going to hit on them for a connect. So I think you got to make a culture that's safe enough so you can help people without them being a dick leech or something, or, or you got fear of being a dick leech. You know, I think. That's a new term for me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a mental note, dick leech. <laughs> that means it's like not happening. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like, no I, I get the meaning, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, it's not like, hey, you know. <laughs> I can, <laughs> here's the directions to the gas station. It's like somebody feels like some dude's a sure. horse. Yeah. I guess horse flies better because then you could be the shit at certain. <laughs> egalitarian majority. But we do, we do need a way where, yeah, people don't feel like rights. Yeah. Patents and stuff like this. And, uh, what, for me, I, uh, I, I've got it worked out in my head where there has to be a dynamic there between the open source and, and the property rights. Just need it. So one guy, and especially nowadays with these uh, open blind patents, you know, I put a patent on uh, waking sure. up in the morning and yeah, yeah, right. So everybody who wakes up, and these guys are, you know, they're just playing these law games, yeah. stuff that's meant to that's protect really us. Up. Yeah. See how humans are? They'll, they'll innovate in these sick ways. And I think part of it is the culture. We can get the culture more into like, hey, innovate in interesting ways that help us instead of this other dick leech shit. You know? <laughs> it's hard coming from punk because we're, we're weirdos and Kind of like, uh, yeah, no one wanted to listen in a way. And then, yeah, the little kids wear purple hair. Oh, we won. Well, <laughs> I'm bringing my kid to work tour. We won. <laughs> I just saw this that, that movie about the Pinochet. Uh -huh. And the guy who helps gets him out, you know. Yeah, he's, he's selling that. He got the soap opera stars. It's kind of a dilemma. And then that thing with the Property rights, nobody will innovate if they can't get a piece of it. So everything will be in this like middle lane. Yeah. Because they'll steal my hard work. I hear this from artists like the, the Eagles and stuff, you know. Where like, luckily for us, we already thought of records as flyers, so we never had any problem. Right. It was all about the gig. And if you right, look right. at the history of music, it's always been performed. Only for a hundred years it got to put on a piece of media and right. sell it. Right. So we're actually going back to the good old days, right? All those fans of the good old days, they're in denial because uh, yeah, you had to play for you. So you got to do it again, no problem. But how, how do you deal with that, that this, the rights of the creator? Yeah, it's a really complicated versus piece, right? yeah, yeah, because yeah. actually, who creates out of a vacuum? Right. Even Mr. Tesla used some of Mr. Maxwell's. If that thing saves lives, then what's the problem? It should be out there, right? right. It should be out there. So it's really, really I think. But you know what? This is the reality. These are the things. Instead of like just sitting back, right. and say, you know, let Santa Claus run it. Yeah, right. We got to get our hands dirty with the reality. That's exactly the point. Like I think we we like really need to talk about this, right? Like I found this um, uh, kind of like very different topic, but similar logic, which is um, I don't know if you have seen like uh, Google just. Um, created this this new company um, which is not inside of Google um, to prolong life. So they're really doing like research into like extending life. Yeah. And they looked at so Larry Page was quoted that they looked at the um, the cost and the effectiveness and the gain of cancer treatment. Yeah. So cancer treatment costs a shitload of money. Yeah. And on average extends the life by four years or something. It's really short. Yeah. Like for specific cancers, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the question becomes... Nine months for my pop. Right. He worked in nuclear engine rooms. Yeah, right. And, but then the question becomes, yeah. like, on a cost-benefit side, like, do you put billions and billions of dollars into this? Or do you put billions and billions of dollars of, into something which has a different uh, prolongment of life expect expectancy? It's... You get these moral dilemmas. Yeah. Right? Right, right. Or, like, you do eight... You give people, like, I just had this discussion about, like, um, feeding starving kids. Yeah. So one of the big problems is you don't know what the what the actual outcome is. So you, sure. you feed them through, like, their a starvation period, and you don't know if they, um, you know, you don't have longitudinal studies which say, like, 20 years from now, how will they do, you know, like, what's the difference? Would they die if you don't give them food? Yeah. But then you have the moral dilemma. You can't do A-B testing. 
you can't say, oh, we take 50% right. of the food Not. and 50% we don't, and we check them out. Sure, sure. Right? So you're right. Like, the thing we need to do is we need to get, we need to ask these questions. We need to get really, yeah. like, deep into it and get yeah. dirty. That's how culture moves ahead. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's part of But that's punk. We need punk in there, yeah. right? We need people who are, like, defying the system and basically say, like, screw this shit. We need to figure this stuff out. Banksy was just doing a tour yeah. in New York City, right? And he said this interesting thing, you know, art should be part of life, not decorate life. Right. And I think the same thing with the stuff we do on the internet and what we do with our artistic expression, our right. culture. It, it, it should be part of the dealio and not just decorate. Yeah. Now, for me and Dee Boone, in a way, we took our uh, together and put it in public. They gave us a form. They let anybody come up on the stage. Those those cats who ran that scene, a bunch of weirdos, Brendan and beautiful weirdos, but they were open. But there was something about it that motivated us, right? Because me and Dee Boone had already been together. But when they put us in that petri dish, things got to happen. What well, Dee Boone called it, think it out loud. And we started putting it in yeah, tunes and stuff like this got involved. It really was a conscious thing. Come on, you dress up funny and have fake names. You know, everybody thought me and Dee Boone's names were fake. <laughs> because they were a little, you know. A lot of them cats had fake. A lot of them, I still don't know their real names. Not no spots, Jay. Spot. I think people had to do it. They wanted to reinvent themselves. Right. Yep. And I think that's okay. Yeah. No, I think it's okay. Uh, Jella, he's not really Jella. <laughs> but it's okay. Do you guys want to do the question? We're part of the same, not link in a chain like a tyrant, yeah. but more like a friend. Yeah. Fabric. fabric. Yes, yeah. I agree. Thank you, Pascal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. If that thing saves lives, yeah. what's the process? It should be out there, right? It should be out there. So it's really, really I think this but is. But you know what? This is the reality. These are the things. Instead of like just sitting back right. and say, you know, let Santa Claus run it. Yeah, right. We got to get our hands dirty with the reality. That's exactly the point. Like, I think we, we like really need to talk about beginning. this, right? Like, I found this um, uh, kind of like very different topic, but similar logic, which is um, I don't know if you've seen like uh, Google just. Um, created this this new company um, which is not inside of Google um, to prolong life. So they're really doing like research into like extending life. Yeah. And they looked at so Larry Page was quoted that they looked at the um, the cost and the effectiveness and the gain of cancer treatment. Yeah. So cancer treatment costs a shitload of money yeah. and on average extends the life by four years or something. It's really short. Yeah. Like for specific cancers, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the question becomes... Nine months for my pop. Right. And he worked in nuclear engine. Yeah, right. right. And, but then the question becomes, yeah. like, on a cost-benefit side, like, do you put billions and billions of dollars into this? Or do you put billions and billions of dollars of, into something which has a different uh, prolongment of life expect expectancy? It's You get these moral dilemmas. Yeah. Right? Right, right. Or, like, you do eight... You give people, like, I just had this discussion about, like, um, feeding starving kids. Yeah. So one of the big problems is you don't know what the what the actual outcome is. So you, sure. you feed them through, like, their a starvation period, and you don't know if they, um, you know, you don't have longitudinal studies which say, like, 20 years from now, how will they do, you know, like, what's the difference? Would they die if you don't give them food? Yeah. But then you have the moral dilemma. You can't do A-B testing. You can't say, oh, we take 50% of right. them food Not. and 50% we don't, and we check them out. Sure, sure. Right? So you're right. Like, the thing we need to do is we need to get, we need to ask these questions. We need to get really, yeah. like, deep into it and get yeah. dirty. That's how culture moves in. Yeah. yeah. And that's, 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 that's decorating that's, it. But that's punk. We need punk in there, yeah. right? We need people who are, like, defying the system and basically say, like, screw this shit. We need to figure this stuff out. Banksy was just doing a tour yeah. in New York City, right? And he said this interesting thing, you know, art should be part of life, not decorate life. Right. And I think the same thing with the stuff we do on the internet and what we do with our artistic expression, our right. culture. It, it, it should be part of the dealio and not just decorate. Yeah. Now, 
for me and Dee Boone. In a way, we took our uh, together and put it in public. They gave us a form. They let anybody come up on the stage. Those those cats who ran that scene, a bunch of weirdos, Brendan and beautiful weirdos, but they were open. But there was something about it that motivated us, right? Because me and Dee Boone had already been together. But when they put us in that petri dish, things got to happen. What well, Dee Boone called it, thinking out loud. And we started putting it in, yeah, in tunes and stuff like this. And got involved. It really was a conscious thing. Come on, you dress up funny and have fake names. You know, everybody thought me and Dee Boone's names were fake. Because they were a little, you know, a lot of them cats have fake. A lot of them I still don't know their real names. No, no spots, Jay. Spot. I think people had to do it. They wanted to reinvent themselves. Right. Yep. And I think that's okay. Yeah. No, I think it's okay. Uh, Jella, he's not really Jell. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Do you guys want to do the question? We're part of the same, not link in a chain like a tyrant, yeah. but more like a yeah. uh, friend. Fabric. Fabric. Yes, yeah. I agree. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you. Thank you so much. If that thing saves lives, then what's the problem? It should be out there, right? It should be out there. So it's really, really I think this but is. But you know what? This is the reality. These are the things. Instead of like just sitting back right. and say, you know, let Santa Claus run it. Yeah, right. We got to get our hands dirty with the reality. That's exactly the point. Like I think we, we like really need to talk about beginning. this, right? Like I found this um, uh, kind of like very different topic, but similar logic, which is, um, I don't know if you've seen like uh, Google just um, created this, this new company, um, which is not inside of Google, um, to prolong life. So they're really doing like research into like extending life. Yeah. And they looked at, so Larry Page was quoted that they looked at the, um, the cost and the effectiveness and the gain of cancer treatment. Yeah. So cancer treatment costs a shitload of money yeah. and on average extends the life by four years or something. It's really short. Yeah. Like for specific cancers, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the question becomes... Nine months for my pop. Right. He worked in nuclear engine. Yeah, right. right. And, but then the question becomes yeah. like, on a cost-benefit side, like do you put billions and billions of dollars into this, or do you put billions and billions of dollars of, into something which has a different uh, prolongment of life expect expectancy? It's you get these moral dilemmas. Yeah. Right. 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 Or like you do eight, you give people like I just had this discussion about like um, feeding starving kids. Yeah. So one of the big problems is you don't know what the what the actual outcome is. So you sure. you feed them through like their a starvation period, and you don't know if they, um, you know, you don't have longitudinal studies which say like, 20 years from now, how will they do? You know, like, what's the difference? Would they die if you don't give them food? Yeah. But then you have the moral dilemma: you can't do A/B testing. You can't say, oh, we take 50% right. and give them food, Not and 50% we don't, and we check them out. Sure, sure. Right. So, you're right. Like the thing we need to do is we need to get we need to ask these questions. We need to get really yeah. like deep into it and get yeah. dirty. That's how culture moves in. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's what okay. But that's punk. We need punk in there, yeah. right? We need people who are like defying the system and basically say, like, screw this shit. We need to figure this stuff out. Banksy was just doing a tour yeah. in New York City, right? And he said this interesting thing you know, art should be part of life, not decorate life. Right. And I think the same thing with the stuff we do on the internet and what we do with our artistic expression, our right. culture. It, it, it should be part of the dealio and not just decorate. Yeah. Now, for me and Dee Boone, in a way, we took our uh, together and put it in public. They gave us a form. They let anybody come up on the stage. Those those cats who ran that scene, a bunch of weirdos, Brendan and beautiful weirdos, but they were open. But there was something about it that motivated us, right? Because me and Dee Boone had already been together. When they put us in that petri dish, things got to happen. What well, Dee Boone called it, think it out loud. And we started putting it in, yeah, in tunes and stuff like this. And got involved. It really was a conscious thing. Come on, you dress up funny and have fake names. You know, everybody thought me and Dee Boone's names were fake. <laughs> because they were a little, you know. A lot of them cats have fake. A lot of them I still don't know their real names. 
No, no spots, Jay. It's five. I think people had to do it. They wanted to reinvent themselves. Right. Yep. And I think that's okay. Yeah. You know, I think it's okay. Uh, Jella, he's not really Jella. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Do you guys want to do the question? We're part of the same, not link in a chain like a tyrant, yeah. but more like a yeah. Uh, fabric. fabric. Yes, yeah. I agree. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> if that thing saves lives, yeah. what's the process? It should be out there, right? It should be out there. So it's really, really I think this but is. But you know what? This is the reality. These are the things. Instead of like just sitting back right. and say, you know, let Santa Claus run it. Yeah, right. We got to get our hands dirty with the reality. That's exactly the point. Like I think we, we like really need to talk about beginning. this, right? Like I found this um, uh, kind of like very different topic, but similar logic, which is um, I don't know if you've seen like uh, Google just um, created this this new company, um, which is not inside of Google, um, to prolong life. So they're really doing like research into like extending life. Yeah. And they looked at so Larry Page was quoted that they looked at the. Um, the cost and the effectiveness and the gain of cancer treatment. Yeah. So cancer treatment costs a shitload of money yeah. and on average extends the life by four years or something. It's really short. Yeah. Like for specific cancers, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the question becomes... Nine months for my pop. Right. We worked in nuclear engine. Yeah, right. right. And, but then the question becomes yeah. like on a cost-benefit side, like do you put billions and billions of dollars into this or do you put billions and billions of dollars of, into something which has a different prolongment of life expectancy. It's, you get these moral dilemmas. Yeah. Right? Right, right. Or like you do eight. You give people, like I just had this discussion about like um, feeding starving kids. Yeah. So one of the big problems is you don't know what the, what the actual outcome is. So you, sure. you feed them through like their a starvation period and you don't know if they, um, you know, you don't have longitudinal studies which say like, 20 years from now, how will they do, you know, like, what's the difference? Would they die if you don't give them food? Yeah. But then you have the moral dilemma. You can't do A-B testing. You can't say, oh, we take 50% of right. them food Not. and 50% we don't, and we check them out. Sure, sure. Right? So you're right. Like, the thing we need to do is we need to get, we need to ask these questions. We need to get really, like, deep into it and get yeah. dirty. That's how culture moves in. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's decorating that's, it. But that's punk. We need punk in there, yeah. right? We need people who are, like, Defying the system and basically say like screw this shit. We need to figure this stuff out Banksy was just doing a tour yeah. in New York City, right? And he said this interesting thing, you know Art should be part of life not decorate life, right? And I think the same thing with the stuff we do on the internet and what we do with our artistic expression our right. culture it, it, it should be part of the dealio and not just decorate yeah now for me and Dee Boone in a way we took our uh, together and put it in public. They gave us a form. They let anybody come up on the stage. Those those cats who ran that scene, a bunch of weirdos, Brendan and beautiful weirdos, but they were open. But there was something about it that motivated us, right? Because me and Dee Boone had already been together. But when they put us in that Petri dish, things got to happen. What did Dee Boone call it? Think it out loud. And we started putting it in, yeah, in tunes and stuff like this. Got involved. It really was a conscious thing. Come on, you dress up funny and have fake names. You know, everybody thought me and Dee Boone's names were fake <laughs> because they were a little, you know. A lot of them cats had fake. A lot of them I still don't know their real names. No, no spots, Jay. It's spot. I think people had to do it. They wanted to reinvent themselves. Right. Yep. And I think that's okay. Yeah. You know, I think it's okay. Uh, Jella, he's not really Jella. <laughs> but it's okay. We're part of the same, not link in a chain like a tyrant, yeah. but more like a thread yeah. uh, fabric. fabric. Yes, yeah. I agree. Thanks, Pascal. Thank you. Thank you so much.